and you will find that you've arrived in Frankenstein. Perhaps the Count will find a way to make his monster work today. For if he solves this monster mania, he can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count Frightenstein. Sunshine just came in from the store. Igor, you're late again. What is your excuse this time? Yes, master. I'm sorry, master, but I was outside in the rain washing my hair. <laughs> well, we have no time to discuss these matters. For now, it is time yes, for you to raise the flag. Do so immediately. I'll just raise the... <laughs> That's what I say. Then we will sing the national anthem. Yes, master. Whenever you're ready, I'm ready. I was born ready. Yes, master, I'm ready. Go. Go, go, Transylvania, where werewolves and bats will always maim, yeah. The murky moor will likely claim, yeah, as we go stumbling through. I pledge the sign of the three-toed slot that I will do my best to do my duty to always obey the laws of the werewolf pack and to never rest until Bruce he lives once more and takes his rightful place in the annals of the distinguished monsters. And I can once again return to that most glorious of all places, Transylvania. As we go stumbling through. Master! Master! Kiss my cape. A note! Kiss my cape. From the opera! Kiss no. my cape. Twice, Master. Kiss my cape. Three times. More, more. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. The note. The note. Oh, explain yourself. Did I hear you correctly, Igor? Did you say you were outside, in the rain, washing your hair? Yes, master. I was outside in the rain, washing my hair. Igor, forgive me. But how can you wash what is not there? <laughs> <laughs> no, master. I wasn't washing my hair hair. I was washing my pet rabbit hair. Rabbit, rabbit. David. A man came to the Oracle to have his right palm read. <laughs> he held it up, the Oracle looked, and this is what he said. Oh, hem and haw, oh dear, yes, yes, it's all quite clear. What is it, cried the startled man? Have I good cause for fear? The oracle said, yes, my friend, I've sad news to report. Don't try to fight it, sir, but you're going to get a wart. Welcome. I am the wise and all-seeing oracle. Bring me your palms, and I will read them. Bring me your tea leaves, and I'll cast your future. Bring me your bumps, and I will decipher them. Oh, the 
crystal balls are so talented these days. They do all sorts of things. And now, now if you only uh, <laughs> bear with me, we will find out what the sign is for today. Oh, wistful mist that the gods have kissed. Which sign, whose name will fortune twist? Ah, and it is Aries, that's right. And that's all the kids that were born between March the 21st and April the 19th. The symbol for Aries is the ram, and that's Aries, all right, battering up against any and all obstacles. Steve McQueen was born then, too. Oh, and he's very popular. And now we will look into the spare crystal ball. Excuse me, Boodoo. Oh, it never seems to work somehow. I can't... There, now, now. Oh, magic crystal, crystal ball. Tell me now. Tell me all. Mm. Mm, you're too young to be smoking. Oh, mm, yes. Ah, uh, now, let's see. Now, we move on to your prediction for the day, and it goes something like this. It's time to settle down and get some homework done, Aries. You've been having a lot of fun, but today calls for decisive action. Do you hear that, Aries? Yes. Well... See that you keep that in mind. Mama Cass, eat your heart out. You know, all the monkeys out in the zoo. You stay tuned and you'll see a few. Ooga booga. I like Griselda's cookie. Long. Griselda mixed a beverage that would guarantee long life and let you live another 50 years of toil and strife. But as it usually happens, dear Griselda got it wrong, and after tasting just a spoonful, no one got to live for long. But anyway, these brews of youth are silly, foolish notions. The only way to live for years is just to avoid such potions. Chopped tomatoes, which is a cross between a tomato and a potato. Tomato. Of course, it could be my potato. <laughs> Everything's so cute, you know that? Diana Durbin, eat your heart out. <laughs> and now here we go. We're going to get the last ingredient. Oh, Polly has a message. I wonder what this will say. Oh, I see. You want me to sing to you. All right. Everybody loves somebody sometime. <laughs> Are you kidding? I love me all the time. <laughs> now, as you well know, anything so involved as the particular things we are cooking right now needs something quite intricate in order to bring out its full taste and flavor. So in this case, we're going to use a ham. <laughs> Come along with me. I'm on my way to the store. <clears throat> Here we are by the cauldron with a ham. Now, we will now place the ham into the cauldron. Oh, well, can't win them all. Well, better late than never. <laughs> Having done that, we now return to the salad bowl, one quick stir, and now we're heading for the cauldron. Whew. Now, we put all the goodies into the cauldron. There we go. 
surgical mask on your head master of course i knew it was there all the time i just remembered that i have some spare electronic parts down the dungeon that if i have calculated properly should make brucey work again how <laughs> dust master i found them <laughs> now quickly igor i want you to bring me my instruments your instruments master no way i want you to stay right here igor but I will require your assistance. I am going to employ an extremely delicate surgical technique. Delicate surgical? Yes, Master. All right, quickly. Pliers. Pliers, pliers. Screwdriver. Screw. Try it. Try it. Toothbrush. Toothbrush. Did you think it'll work, Master? Do I think it will work? Do you have no faith? Of course it will work. Have I ever failed before? Don't answer that. Yes, master. Now, I want you to connect this wire to Brucey's left bolt. Left bolt. There. There we are, master. <laughs> All right, Igor. Good. Now, throw the switch. Yes, master. Not like that, you yum yum. I meant for you to turn it on. Yes, Master. <laughs> All right. Master, but where were the parts from that you put in the monster? My old pinball machine. Huh? I simply changed the polarity from AC to DC and the primary circuit from household current to monster current. Master, that is absolute genius and very, very tremendous interest. Of course it is. And enough of this chit-chat. Now I want you to start it up and absorb my genius. Now, Master... Now! <laughs> Meditate upon the paradox of opposites to keep the silence of the supreme secret. Wisdom is to discover for the first time the void of empty spaces. <laughs> The doctor pet vet got a call to come down to the docks. It seemed that someone found a whale left stranded on the rocks. The doctor grabbed equipment that helped speed respiration. It's hard to fix a ten-ton whale by mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. But on the beach, that whale seemed quite contented on the sand. It seemed he'd come ashore himself. <laughs> in order to get tan. I wonder where Dr. Petvet is. Hello, Igor. Stop your wondering. Here I am. <laughs> How are you today, Igor? <laughs> I'm all right, Dr. Petvet. And look what I have for us today. Oh, they look like... 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 Mouses and hamsters and, That's and, right. and everything. They look like that, but actually, our little friends here have two names. Oh, is that? Look at there he goes. Oh, he's a little racer, that guy. Now, these are gerbils, or they have another name. They're called Mongolian mouse. Mongolian mouse? Mongolian mouse, or mice, the plural being mice, you see? Nice. There we go. Now, they're very inquisitive, very, very so. And they make an excellent pet. Now, they don't bite, and they're very friendly. Now, they're clean little fellows, too, I'll tell you that. Do you know something that they do not drink water? Don't they get touristy? Well, I'll tell you how they get their moisture. They get their moisture from leaves. They like to eat leaves, green leaves. This is much like the koala bear in Australia. Now, they have the gum tree there and the eucalyptus leaves. Now, koala bears, that's how they get their moisture, you see? Isn't that an interesting thing? Very I interesting. Now, 
Now, let's see where we're at here. Now, we can also eat mixed grains, including raisins and also grass and plants, you see? Yes. Oh, look at that, aren't they cute? Hello there. Uh, when are you going to come out today? Or are you just going to run around there? Look at them go, isn't do he they, a do, do they all live in cages? Oh, yes, some of them do, yes, but a lot of them dig tunnels and burrow, uh, and they like to live in these conditions. Oh, they can even live in tin cans and pipes, and they'll, they'll even return if they're left outside. Did you know that? That's oh, I yes, wish I had pets that. like this. Now, you notice they have long black back legs here, and they have a tufted tail there. Isn't that cute? Oh, look, he's standing up like that. That's right. Oh, they're never so cute. And they're the fastest growing pet today. I'll tell you that. The children just love little gerbils, or the Mongolian mouse, as we call them. Yes. Oh, it's just fantastic. See the large eyes and ears there? And oh, oh, look at They're just so agile. Oh, they're lovely. Well, they progress by, by long leaps and bounds, you see. Oh, they can just leap away, my goodness. They're always on the go. Now, they're active in the daytime, and they sleep at night, much unlike the hamsters and mice, you see. Now, they store their food in little cheek pouches. Oh, like Dr. Putt-Putt here with his cheek pouches. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lifespan of, oh, well, oh, let's see, two, two to four years. Really? Now, I want you to have them as your pets. Me? Mm-hmm. Mickey and Edna. Um, Mickey and... Wait. All right. All right, Mickey. All right, Edna. Let's see you play. Here we go. Oh, uh, Mr. Sloan, so I've got Mickey and Edna here, and it's not expensive to have them because they don't drink water. They just eat lettuce and raisins, and they can live in an old jam tin or in a pipe, and they'll come back if they're lost. Okay? G please? Thanks. Every day. Oh, Igor. Oh, relax yourself. Don't you worry. If the sloth wants to be that selfish, then you let him. You still have Dr. Pet Vet and all his pets. And remember, Igor, always pets, pets are, are friends. friends. Right. Bye, Dr. Pet I'll see you soon. Come tomorrow. Bye. Dr. Petvet is very humanitarian, carrying vegetarian. The master said to tell you, don't go away. Hey, you know what? My brother is so sentimental, he dips his nose in ink and tattoos mom all over his victims. <laughs> The professor said, I've got to test a helium balloon. It's waiting in a farmer's field to launch this afternoon. We drove out there and sure enough, the Zeppelin stood inflated and people ran around checking things while others stood and waited. The dignitaries soon arrived and stepped out from their cars, shaking hands and patting backs and handing out cigars. They climbed up on the platform, which was grossly overloaded, lit their cigars and seemed surprised when the whole balloon exploded. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and men and women, and people? I am Julius Sumner Miller, the Professor Julius Sumner Miller, in this strange place where strange things arise and from which they emerge. Strange, uncommon things. Consider the following. Consider the following. Wonderful to contemplate. Here I have a triangle. A triangle. You all know as schoolboys, ages 4 to 94, that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. And I am led to reflect with you on the man who first gave us the idea, Pythagoras, a Greek. And how did he prove it? Wonderful. Imagine that you were in the academy in Athens, and there are blocks of marble on the floor, square, rectangular, and such. And here is a great column of marble supporting the roof of the temple. And a shadow is cast by the column. 
and it intersects here at corners and angles. And so was Pythagoras led to say as follows. Let me see how I shall do it. I am going to take off this angle here, take it off, and put it here. And then I'm going to take off this angle and also put it there. Let me see if I can do it. There I have it. There I have it. The three angles sum to 180 degrees or half a full circle. The Babylonians having given us the idea of 360 degrees for the full circle. Here is a man who in the 4th century BC, when he did look, he did see. So much so that the Greeks have honored him by commemorating his work on the Pythagorean theorem and on cylinders and spheres in stamps, which we wish now to look at more sharply. Stamps. Here are the two Greek stamps, this one and that one, which commemorate the great Pythagoras. Here is the Pythagorean theorem, of which I shall speak another time. And there, a cylinder circumscribed by a sphere, or surmounted by a sphere. Now, regarding Pythagoras, something for you, you, for you all to consider. Those who were good mathematicians were named to the order of Pythagoras and wore a badge, a pentagram. So I have a big pentagram for you big people who are mathematicians and smaller pentagrams for smaller people, indeed for smaller ones still. Now there is a condition that, uh, that is imposed on you if you wish to be a member of the Pythagorean order. What is the condition? That anything you discover must be attributed to the master Pythagoras. And so it was that the famous Greek geometer Hippasus, H-I-P-P-A-S-U-S, he discovered how to circumscribe a sphere around a dodecahedron, 12-sided figure, put a sphere around it. He decided how to do it, but he failed to pay tribute to Pythagoras, and guess what happened to him? He was drowned at sea. Drowned at sea. I've just been to the doctor. What did he say? He said, I have a growth on my neck. What is it? My head. Did I get it right? Excuse me, but is this tooth yours? But I am the count, and what I say goes. Yes. Oh, well, same to you. <laughs> I told him. <laughs> Does it sound like he goes? The door, master. Of course it's the door. That means the mailman is here. Go get it. The door, master. Get it. Never fails, master. I don't know. I'm not uh, such a bad little let boy. Don't bother you, Igor. Now, what is in the mail today? Well, Master, we got all kind of things. Here's monster confessions. Oh, very good. <laughs> yes, Master. I'll read that later. There's a special article the Wolfman and some of the wild parties that he throws. Oh, I will especially read that later. <laughs> Quite good. Then we've got Reader's Disgust. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes. Nothing interesting in here, Master. Nothing at all? Well, I don't know. Maybe you could find something. Let right? me see. Oh, there's an article here on Henry Jackson, the man who invented the headache. That should be good reading, oh, eh? Oh, yes, mister. Yes, very I good. didn't think it would be interesting to you. Ah, oh, never mind that. All things are interesting. <laughs> what is that? To Count Frankenstein, a box, free sample. Free sample? Let me see that. Here, open it up. Ah, free, I love free samples. Yes, mister. This is excellent. <laughs> Quickly, I'm all, I'm all eyes. I, well, what's in it? It's empty, mister. What are you talking about? It can't be empty. It's a free sample. It's, 
tempting, Master. Well, I guess it shows you what you get for free samples these <laughs> days, eh? You don't get anything for nothing, that Master. That seems to be the truth. <laughs> All right, anything else in the mail? Oh, the Grove and Mall, Master. Oh, good. Let me see that. Is there something you want to see, Master? Yes, yes. Aha! Uh -huh. I want to see if there's anything I can order. I love to order the things. <laughs> I have found it. I have found it. Yes, Master. I found page one. Ha, 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 little joke. Yes. No, wait a minute, here. Wait a minute. Let's see if there is anything that... Here is one. Ah, very good. That's fine. Here, I can't read the big print. Why don't you read it to me, Igor? Yes, Master. One thousand and one ridiculous things to do with your monster. Send four gulars to the Timothy E. Frighten Company, Post Office Box 401, Friend and Stone 2B, or not to be. A thousand and one things? Yeah, a thousand and one for four gulars. Right? Four gulars, let me think now. Four gulars, let's see, that goes into a hundred thousand. This one, see, this one. Get me a pencil and paper. I want to figure out how many ridiculous things I can get per gular. <laughs> The old librarian is really very kind. For though he's gruff with me, I tell him I don't mind. I visit him quite often and I try to be his friend and sometimes go to ask him if he's got a book to lend. And all because the only other person he might know can never come and visit him. It's Edgar Allan Poe. than yours. We shall find out, said the sun. Here it comes. I know a way to settle the argument. Do you see that man coming down the road? Well, whichever one of us makes him take off his coat, we must reckon the stronger. You try first. <laughs> Can't get in you, I know it. <clears throat> The sun hid himself behind a cloud while the wind began. The wind blew. The man bent his head. The wind whistled. The man shivered. The wind roared and raged and sent icy blasts against the man. Oh, they're getting him, and I'm getting you. I know it. But the harder the wind blew, the closer the man wrapped his coat about him. My turn now, said the sun, as it came out from behind a 
cloud. I've been hiding. <laughs> At first, the sun shone gently, and the man unbuttoned his coat and let it hang loosely from his shoulders. Then the sun covered the whole earth with warmth. Within a few minutes, the man was so hot, he was glad to take off his coat and find a shady place. And the moral is, when force fails, gentleness often succeeds. Got you. I got you. I didn't get you. Well, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. Goodbye. I like the librarian. Do you know that a minute or even two seems like an eternity being away from here for that long? I believe in the oracle. Now we will answer our letter. I'd love to get your letters. And thank you so much, kids, for writing me. It's very important. Ah, dear oracle, why do you have to say spells? Won't magic work without repeating those silly words over again? Signed, impatient. Oh, well, now impatient. The answer is usually it won't. And there are two reasons for this. First, the magic properties of the words themselves. Just as the great religions have, have sacred words, so witchcraft has its sacred and magic words. By repeating these again and again, they produce a powerful hypnotic effect. Yes, and it can direct the projection in one powerful beam. Now, does that answer your question? I would think so. Have you anything to add to that? If somebody doesn't stop that guy with the gun, can't stand that gun. Come on, man. Igor, get that, please. I'm much too busy here. Uh, Hello? Constable of you speaking. You'll have to speak up. You are a little fuzzy. This is Constable of you speaking. Oh, what can I do for you, Constable Fuss? Well, Igor, I'm sorry that it's my duty to inform you that your Bruce is under arrest. Under arrest? What's the charge? Seventy dollars and thirty-seven cents. No, no, I mean, what's he under arrest for? He's under arrest for loitering. Well, where was he loitering? Well, no, a slab fitting for his description has been in the vicinity of, of uh, Pennsylvania and Vain around the 1600s. <laughs> that was over 300 years ago. Bruce has been here since 1066. Hasn't set one foot outside this castle. Well, well it looks like you, you have got an airtight alibi. No, I've got a monster and he's temporarily out of service. Very good, Igor. As a matter of fact, that was so good, you may answer the next one. Now I was fooling you. Another one. <laughs> Hello? Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Hatch. Hatch who? Kasuntai. Got you. <laughs> Practical joker. Never mind. For now, the Count will answer. Good evening, Count Caban and Nightclub. The Count himself is speaking to you. Uh, hello, Count. Uh, this is Sammy, the manager of Pony Senate, uh, you know, the famous nightclub singer. Of course, Sammy, manager of the famous singer. What can I do for you? I'd like to book, a, to book a room for Pony. Well, how about the library? Oh, but I'm afraid you can only have it for two weeks. You see, after that, your uh, card expires, and then it's five cents a day extra. Oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, now, now, can you guarantee me full house for each performance? Of course, I can guarantee that. Not to worry, there will be standing room only, for I will remove all of the seats. <laughs> Clever, no? <laughs> Which reminds me, we haven't heard from you know who today. All right, I know you're in there. Come on! Where is he? When I need her, he's never here. Seven, eight, twelve. What is Vincent Price's price? An expedition Warner Clyde once led into Peru found just the sort of animal not seen in any zoo. This creature was a cranky sort. All he would do was grunt, but stranger still was his two heads with one at back and front. 
At feeding time, Buana Clyde was driven round the bend. No sooner was the one mouth filled than two would grunt again. But even worse, this animal was never sure of knowing while on the run if he had come or whether he was going. <clears throat> and so nice to see you. Welcome to Zany Zoo. And thank you, Ban Saban, for the band. They're very good today, as usual. Yes, welcome to Zany Zoo. And I am Bawana Clyde Batty at your service. And now you've come to see some thrilling and beautiful pictures of animals and birds, haven't you? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm just the one to show them to you, and I'm happy to do so. And remember, you can have your own safari or just go into your own zoo. That's all you have to do. Get a little hat like mine if you wish and just walk down and take a look at all the animals and what it says about them. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Wait your turn, wait your turn. Manners, manners. All right now. <laughs> My goodness gracious, you're in a tantrum today, aren't you? All right, well now, today, we're going to talk about some beautiful birds, and they're very special birds, so I'm going to get my film going so that you can see what I've been lucky enough to capture on film. Yes, we're all going to have a little peek here. As soon as I make sure that the old camera's working right, switches on here, all right, tubes tight, ready to go, and away we go. Right. Oh, look, look, a couple of fine gentlemen here, haven't we? This is now, this is the penguin, the king and the umboat, or Peruvian. Now, the penguins, many species of penguins, some quite different from others, you see, either in feather col coloration or the size. Now, two different types of penguins, the king, which is the biggest of them all, are found in ice-free sub-Antarctic seas between the Falkland Islands southward to South Sandwich Islands and the Heard Islands. Now, as lately, a stately, stately walk, as you can see, they look like they have tuxedos on, don't they? Oh, 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 oh. oh beautiful, aren't they? Proud, proud birds they are, too, I'll tell you that. Now, they have a stately walk and long, knife-shaped build, which they hold up. Look at that, look, sticking his neck right off he is. He wants to take a look, see what's going on. Isn't that lovely, boy? Fine gathering there. They're having a bit of a chat. They are, aren't they? I wonder what they're talking about. Now, they get to weigh about 34 pounds. Now, blue, black there, and they're three feet long. Three feet. Imagine a bird that long. Isn't it lovely, though? All right, chaps. And what's happening? Oh, you heard me, did you? Hello there. Hello. Yes. Yes, it's Buwana. It's Buwana right here. That's right. Oh, and here's our other chap. Isn't he lovely? Now, this is the Peruvian or the Umboat. Now, they're found further north along the islands off the coast of Peru and Chile. That's right. Oh, I just love to talk about all my beautiful bird friends. Fantastic, isn't it? All right, all right. You can have some tea with me shortly. All right, I must be saying goodbye. And remember, remember those famous words, Uga Booga which in this particular case means I'd best have the tea ready if the elephant is going to come to see me. All right, we'll see you later. Bye for now. Wait till I tell Igor's slob. Woo! For emergency service personnel, post-traumatic stress is a devastating reality. We help those who spend their lives helping you. Visit Tema.ca. Humanity never asked itself why you deserve to survive. Maybe you don't. You love me?
Bright, shiny futures are overrated anyway. Battlestar Galactica, Saturdays. Only on space. I don't feel like speaking to my subjects today. They seem in such a happy frame of mind. Why should I bother? You're right, Master. <sighs> you know, Master, I just think Brucey looks a little bit pale nowadays. No, I don't think so, Igor. Actually, I think that Brucey looks a little bit pale these days. You know that? You know what I should do? I should concentrate my efforts and invent something for Brucey. Something like what, Master? Let me think. Let me think. Of course, why not? The Freitenstein portable suntan machine. What's it for, master? What else would a suntan machine be for but to give Brucey a tan? Such a tan that they will think he just got back from Embalm Springs. Oh, that would be nice. A beautiful holiday resort. I am off to the workshop for I, my invention. I will talk to Brucey in the meantime. How do you make you a beautiful invention for a suntan for you? So you just do your thing. All right, Igor. Oh, what took you so long, Master? Behold, my new invention. Beautiful. It is fantastic, is it not? Fantastic, Master. I will require your assistance on this. How does it work, Master? How does it work? It is very simple principle. We have the laser beam here, and in here we have the variable vane torque converter for extra passing power and takeoff. When we concentrate the rays of the sun onto Bruce's face, he will be a handsome devil again. Here, I want you to plug this in the machine. It's ready now. Plugged in the machine. All right. Almost, but yet almost. Right, master. Let it go. In. All right, throw the switch. Switch thrown. I don't mean throw the switch like that. I mean turn it on. Just turn the little knob there. Now. It's on, it's on. Let there be light. What happened? What happened? Bruce, you ask me what happened. You ask a count what happened? Yes, master, what I'll, happened? I'll tell you what happened. It's... I extension, please. Why? Well, uh, I'd like to do a good job, that's why. <laughs> what books have you read? Oh, I've read uh, Andy Hardy, Goes to a Nightclub, Rebecca of Frankenstone Farm, and The Adventures of Super Hippie. I want you to say the alphabet. Oh, that's easy. One, two, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, ten, twenty-two. Don't you know the ABCs? Why, were they also classmates of mine? How can you miss so much school? Well, it's easy. You just turn left at the moat. <laughs> oh, you play hooky? No, I don't have a hooky stick. I don't even have a hooky puck. And I don't even have any hooky pads. Good night, Igor. Good night, teacher. Hello. I take two steps to the right. Hello. Take two steps back and you'll find a surprise. Hello. 
Hello? Uh, take two giant steps to the right and you'll find a surprise. Igor, I am weary from all these exercises. Pick me up. Take me two steps there and two steps back. Oh, right, mister. One, <coughs> two, <coughs> and one, <coughs> two. <coughs> I'll get that. Hello? Uh, without the big guy. I don't know who he thinks he is. He's playing with the cow. Ring, you devils. Ring, ring. Hello? One more clue. Run to the nearest phone and throw it out the window. I'll use the one I have. The lights are growing dim. There's no one left but me and him. When next we meet in Frankenstone, don't come alone. Definitely over. <laughs>